guys, guess what? We got a long weekend ahead of us. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys are actually kind of bored right now. You have nothing else to do at home. Or maybe you're going on vacation and you're in a long car ride. So, I have some trains here. And yes, I have made some pretty big uh, refurbishments, I guess. After some past uh, experiences and as of right now I'm probably not doing much besides this because I am also going on a vacation like packing up and no I am NOT going to bring some of my trains on vacation because I know some people who do or one person anyways let me just um, go show you some new stuff I got since I haven't made a video on this in a while and I'm sure you don't want to see me just standing here just uh, speaking now let's start off with a new logo that I haven't actually shown I've had this for a while but um, I haven't really gotten around to um, showing it to you or like playing in any video and that is this it's Union Pacific 1983 now what this is, is it's a heritage unit of a past railroad, quite obviously, the Western Pacific Railroad. Now I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, if I um, try to focus in on the locomotive, um, come on camera please, okay there we go. You can see the emblem of the Feather River route, which the railroad ran through. Also another thing I can tell is like, that this is an SD-78 is because of the antenna that's mounted on, on here. AHs, which are basically SC70 AHs or the heavy versions of these, don't have, um, from what I recall, these white uh, radio um, antennas because um, they're the heavier model. Not sure how, I, I don't get that either. But um, I have two of those, um, which is number 9088 and then my, um, my military unit, UP 1943. But in like performance-wise, like under the show, they're basically the same thing, more or less. As usual with Cabo stuff, a lot of these um, warning labels are like pretty much legible, from what I can tell. And you, of course, you cannot forget about the over the top of the locomotive, which has most of the features that I'm interested in. And also, yes, this is this has directional headlighting, unlike some of my uh, my cheaper models, I guess. Okay, let's set this aside, and let's go into the rolling stock. Now, since I have had some experiences with the layout, um, I noticed, hey, the track has been getting kind of dirty. For example, if I just rub my fingers here, you see this. So, here's the solution. It's basically a street sweeper for railroad tracks. And I'm sure a lot of you guys call these track cleaning cars because that's what it does. It, it cleans the track for you. Now obviously this creates a ton of friction. Like it, I believe this is like the equivalent of like 10 cars or so, or at least I heard somebody say on the Discord server. And as you can see, this the rollability in this is not the best in the world. Unlike how some, like I'll show you in a little bit, can, which is, one is gonna be, this one I'll just send out right now. So, I got this off of eBay from someone who used it previously. Um, this is, a Pepsi Cola reefer, 50, uh, 50 foot reefer. And um, what's odd is, despite this being one of those old fashioned reefers, you can tell it's old fashioned because it has um, ladders going up the sides and it has walkways on the top. Come on, camera, please focus. And um, obviously, by the livery put on this, is um, old fashioned. I believe these were built around when. I don't know, let me, I think you can sort of see the build date. Where's the build date? Oh, here we go. It is, um, BLT 
1901. Wait. Am I reading that right? Uh, come on, come on. Nine, yeah, 901. So that must have been September of 1901? It kind of makes it um, the oldest piece of equipment I think is on my layout right, right now. Alright, um, what is, what is this one? Does this say the build date on there? I'm pretty sure it does. Come on, camera. Please focus. You know you want to. You know you want to. You know you want to. Okay, well, kind of focuses, but I can't find any build dates. Now, I got a more stable piece of equipment and one that I use outdoors. So, um, this is, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys who live in the United States have seen these, which are, um, I believe 50 foot, no, they're not high cubes, um, they're just regular 50 foot box cars, which are around currently. As you can see, um, this is the flat roof, and for those of you who don't know much about these types of trains is, unlike these other ones, there's no walkway on them. And that's because later on, I believe the FRA said that they wanted to just have no walkways in here. Or actually, you see um, the ladders on the sides don't even go all the way up. Because really, the whole point is they don't want you to be up there. But sure, like those hardcore subway surfer guys just somehow parkour their way up to the top and all that fun stuff. Anyways, let's get into the details of this. I'm pretty sure the build date is legible in here. Oh yes, it is. Um, whoa, that's a... Wait, wait, no, that's not the build date. Excuse me. It's right there. Uh, so that would be February 1972. The way you can tell build dates is... Um, uh oh, come on, please focus. Is um, The first letter, like that two over there, usually indicates the month. And... The two-digit letter right after that indicates the year, so I think it will be realistic for that year, and you pretty much got it. So in this case, this would be 2 February 72, meaning 1972. So I'm pretty sure this, if this thing's still around, it's probably near the end of its, of its lifespan, because the FRA has a law where, for, I think I think this is true, but um, the, I think the FRA has a law where, um, Freight cards cannot exceed 50 years of revenue service. Now to the last thing, which is this uh, DTTX 48-foot um, well car. I got this because I just saw it for a nice price. It's not that expensive. It is Akron, so those couplers kind of those mechanic couplers are kind of questionable, because in my experiences, like. Coupler height can be an issue. So, um, TC says this is 48 foot. Just look at the big number on the side. And I think you can see the build date on here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, it should be like right there. I'm not sure if the camera can focus on that, but we're gonna try. And it decides not to. Great. Uh, oh no. Well, anyways, on to the other details. Um, you get, um, see-through walkways. Like, you see there's little holes or, like, little, um, holes punched out in the walkways. Um, most of the stuff here, like the walkways or the brake handles are, um, separately applied. Everything else seems, uh, molded on. Also, one thing I forgot to note was, I got a whiteboard. I'm supposed to use this for school, but I just had no other place to put this besides next to the uh, RC stuff. And it's pretty much having stuff like how which switches do which, speed limits I set up, which are probably not the most realistic things in the world. And then of course, you gotta have the locomotive roster. Now, just because I said that um, these things are pretty heavy, these um, Track cleaning cars. Let me show you how it does with um, just that one locomotive. Slightly struggled, I guess. 
But it really shows me putting like other cards on it under. I guess this is actually a pretty powerful locomotive. It also kind of appears to be a little warm in here. So... Of course, I also have a spot to charge my phone in here as well. Because if you're going to be doing long running sessions, then you're going to need to charge your phone while doing this. So, without anything else, let's go run some trains.
Well, here we have all the trains back in the yard again. So with that being done, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.